Thanks. Let's boot it up. Uh, the boot process. Well, it's really, really fast. Considering it's the very, very first time boot. You know what I mean, right? Uh, unlike... <coughs> oh, did I mention Windows earlier? Uh, yeah. And it just straight into the desktop, which is really great. Well, speaking of the desktop, well, it looks so familiar. Yeah, you can see the icons and the taskbar. So familiar and nostalgic, you know. But wait a second. Why the hell there is a battery indicator down here? And oh, what? How did you know my battery indicator on my this very laptop? And the thing is, uh, it's not even running Windows on it. Bruh. Well, let's jump into the file explorer. Well, it kind of looks so familiar, you know. It reminds me to Windows 98. But something's a little bit odd on the root directory. Instead of Windows, uh, it's systems, by the way. Uh, for some reason, you know. Yeah, that's quite odd, you know. It's a bit rebellion, you know. <laughs> and let's explore the documents folder. Wait a minute. Is that Floppa? And when I go to the recycled bin... Uh, there is a monkey diving. But speaking of monkey, have you seen the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie? Yeah, I'm just trying out there, you know, just asking. Now, it's time for gaming. The loading screen looks oddly familiar, but wait a minute. Is that a dishery? But hey, the game itself is a free roaming sandbox. Well, not really sandbox, you know, but it's perfect for those uh, practicing the uh, bunny hop, you know, yeah. <laughs> But sadly, the message room seems to be permanently closed. Uh, but there is an alternative though. Yeah, remember the door disk icon? Well, if you launch it, well, it redirects to uh, Windows 96 Discord server. The package manager looks like something straight out of React OS. And there's even a 3D file explorer that promised to turn your computer into a Jurassic Park style Unix system. Fingers crossed. Oh, and did I mention Doom and a whole bunch of bonus wallpapers? Well, explore those details later. Just a heads up though. Uh, if you encounter a bug, uh, Windows 96 hopefully opens a web browser window that looks like Internet Explorer to report it, you know. Just a reminder that we'll be logging your IP. Yuck. Let's dive into the control panel. You can change the wallpaper from boring old default to a hacker theme one that mysteriously boosts your social credit score. Those Chinese characters must be doing something. Gar. Speaking of the theme, there are quite a bit uh selections, you know. There is a classic Windows 98 theme, a Windows 2000 that somehow resemble Windows ME because of the usage of font, you know. A developer theme that turns everything into a glorious mess of wireframes and placeholders. And Mac OS X's No Leopard theme that transforms this web-based operating system into a bootleg. There's even a Windows XP theme just for a good measure, you know. Uh, the built-in wallpaper are a bit... Uh... What can I say? Uh, minimalistic, I guess. But if you think that it's not really much, yeah, you can download it on uh, the package manager. Yep, there's a lot. Yep, starting from shh, don't leak our hard work from the confidential build of Windows, the entire Windows 7 wallpaper collection, 
abstract masterpiece worthy of your uh, main computer and of course a plethora of windows 96 theme good uh goodies you know <laughs> yeah they're really good all right the settings on the control panel well what can i say kind of boring you know password encryption backups network setting yada 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 who wants it we all know real hackers don't use those boring security features well speaking of things that aren't that exciting the device manager might uh well it's not really much to show on here but somehow it detects your display resolution your CPU and the GPU. Also, a bonus point for recognizing my CPU as a generic processor with eight logical processor. That's gonna be the most generic processor ever made. Although knowing it runs on a M1 MacBook Air with that info makes it all well kind of funny, I guess. Moving on to the text editor. First up, Monaco. Well, just skip it because it's a bit broken, so... Then, there is TextPad. Basically, a Notepad identical twin. The older Notepad, you know. The entertainment section boasts emulators, but we can show them because Nintendo's lawyers are probably sharpening their katanas as we speak. But hey, who needs fancy emulators when you have a music tracker? filled with classic mod and XM tunes. Remember keygens? Yep, this thing got them all! Plus, there is Blocks, a shameless Minecraft ripoff that somehow avoids copyright infringement. We also can forget gaming, that the one we showed it earlier, yeah. And Meme Man, yeah, that just simply exists, you know, but who doesn't love a good meme? And the ever nostalgic 3D pinball space cadet that somehow brings me to the good old elementary school years, playing on the school computer during ICT lesson. For the educational crowd, there is Pumpkin World, and for the easily frustrated, there is Troll, an app that lives up to its name in spectacular fashion. Unleash your inner hackery with the built-in terminal. It feels like a Unix system, or Linux, or whatever you can call it, you know. Except with way fewer commands thanks to the limited WSH. Yeah. Ever feel the urge to relieve your childhood by systematically crashing your computer? Windows 96 lets you to embrace the inner gremlin with a crash option. Yeah, I'm the blue screen of that kids on YouTube right now. There's also an effect app perfect for trolling unsuspecting housemates. Yep, you can turn the screen upside down. Although it looks normal to Australian viewers out there. <laughs> and the GL test app is a, uh, well, yeah, sort of exists with measly 60 frames per second text for uh, VSync. Feeling curious? The tips app has some interesting advice. Like the time it told me to go outside and play ball. The thing is, well, let's just say that I'm more of a movie watching kind of girl and I no longer have a balls either, which is sucks. Moving to the task manager. The thing is, uh, I can call it a uh, modern incompetence, bruh. It can even monitor the CPU and memory usage, but at least you can uh, close apps on it. And for some reason, it come preloaded with Linux because why not? Feeling adventurous? Convert some plain text to base64 with the built-in converter. Worried about malware? Scan your system with Neutron antivirus. The security software might just <laughs> Wreck your computer as effectively as Norton. And there is a PC health check that won't let you to upgrade to the mythical Windows 97. Yeah. 
and for some reason, Windows 96 even comes pre-infected with youarnidiot.org virus. The only escape? Command R. Simple. Remember that 3D file explorer that promised a Jurassic Park style Unix experience? Turns out, it's just a glorified version of the original Tomb Raider main menu. Disappointing. But what about Doom? Well, to be expected, it runs perfectly on the display with a processing power and at least 8 megabytes of RAM and it put device, you know. Yeah, it should be run. Even a TI-84 can run Doom. <laughs> For a joke operating system running on the web browser, Windows 96 is surprisingly impressive. Yeah, this is a joke operating system. What do you think? A fork of Windows 95? Get out of here! <laughs> think of it as a, a more serious version of uh, Windows 93, I guess, with a healthy dose of bugs and quirks. Like the fact that I couldn't change the wallpaper on the XP theme Except for the troll face, of course. Maybe it's intentional, I don't know. But this can be a great idea to fool your friends in this April Fool's Day. But what's not an April Fool's though is 